maybe uh, the, the cancer in your family that took five years to progress can now progress in one year or six months, right? So you have to keep that into consideration just because you're cancer-free today, proven with blood work and perhaps ultrasounds and MRIs, doesn't mean you're cancer-free a year from now or three years from now or maybe even six months from now. Welcome to Vigorous Health. I'm Coach Steve. Let's discuss the cancer markers which you should be checking before you decide to add growth hormone, growth hormone secretagogues, GW1516, perhaps vitamin E, and everything else that has been associated with the progression of pre-existing cancer. Now, I don't think that any of these compounds can actually induce cancer growth and formation, but they can surely accelerates pre-existing cancer's progression. So it would be a highly beneficial for your overall health and state of mind for the hypochondriacs out there. If you do your cancer markers and check them frequently, you can tack off another box of your overall health and uh, perhaps continue worry-free for a few more years. Now, growth hormone and growth hormone secretagogues, um, of course, elevate growth hormone concentrations in the bloodstream. Some of them do that more than others. MK677, for example, chronically elevates growth hormone concentrations in the bloodstream marginally, which might contribute to insulin resistance with uh, continuous use. Doesn't happen for everybody, but I've seen it happen more than enough to the point where I'm no longer interested in MK677 and when I would prefer to use exogenous growth hormone intermittently after checking my cancer markers uh, several times over the last couple of years. Now, with cardarine, it's been shown to progress colorectal cancer in gene-mutated mice. I don't think that cardarine is able to induce cancer formation, but it's, that study is still notable. So it would be advised to check your um, cancer markers before you add GW1516 or uh, growth hormone or growth hormone secretagogues. Now, when it comes to vitamin E, there are some studies out there that show that it uh, contributed to uh, lung cancer progression or prostate cancer progression. But there's also many studies out there that show that uh, vitamin E is able to act as a protective agent in cancer formation and cancer progression. And I think with the lung cancer and um, prostate cancer studies, it was shown that vitamin E might have been a contributing factor. But then again, you know, stress, smoking, uh, dehydrotestosterone might also be a contributing factor. So there's always a bit of an overlap. I'll leave all the research up to you. I'll just want to discuss the cancer markers which are relevant for bodybuilders before you decide to add in certain compounds and uh, go over some of them and you know, which organ they might be related to. So I wrote them all down. I got the show notes right here because it's impossible to remember. And I'll put them up here on the screen so you guys can follow along. Now, it highly depends on your hereditary background and if members of your family developed cancer at certain stages of their lives. So in my case, my grandmother had stomach cancer. Um, unfortunately, it was not able to be resolved. It metastasized and she passed away. So that's the only incidence of cancer in my family, which you know makes me a little bit worried. Um, so I've been checking my cancer markers ever since um, to ensure that I am uh, remain cancer-free. And if I do at one point in my life develop cancer, I'm able to catch it early on and uh, you know hopefully resolve it. Uh, so, so far, I'm cancer-free, luckily. And I'm still using growth hormone and GW1516, which I'm not really worried about of using, considering that all my cancer markers come back uh, within range besides one instance which we'll discuss a little bit later in this video. So the markers of note as a general cancer screening are alpha fetoprotein, cancer antigen 15, 3, 19, 9 and 125, carcino embryonic antigen CEA, ferritin, mine is elevated but I don't have cancer because I have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, um, so again, you know, some of these markers are going to overlap with other conditions. Beta human chorionic gonadotropin. Now, that shouldn't be elevated if you're a man. It should only be elevated if you're doing a post cycle therapy or you're a, a woman that's pregnant. That's the only two cases where it can be elevated. Human growth hormone. Again, for most of us, that is going to be elevated after we've done our initial cancer screening. 
Um, so, you know, if you get like a discount and you want to do a cancer screening and like you did what I did, you administer growth hormone before your cancer screening, that marker should be off. Again, if your growth hormone is high potency, if you want to have true indication of uh, cancer formation, then you don't do this growth hormone administration and you see where your natural growth hormone concentrations are at. Because again, you know, growth hormone, ACG, prolactin, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, those are all indications of uh, pituitary adenomas if any or a combination of these pituitary hormones are elevated. Neuron specific annulase, that's the only marker that I ever saw off on my, um, you know, extensive cancer screenings that I've done in the past. Free prostate specific antigen, which is uh, unbound PSA. Normally you have prostate specific antigen that's bound to several different proteins in the bloodstream and free PSA is unbound. You also have prostatic specific acid phosphatase protein, another marker of your prostate. Now these markers are the first screening method to assess if cancer is uh, forming in your body. So if any of these are elevated, it might indicate that there's cancer and you need to look at which other cancer markers are elevated. If it's only one, it's a little bit less indicative than if several markers are elevated. So with PSA, for example, if your prostate-specific antigen, free prostate-specific antigen, and your prostatic-specific acid phosphatase protein are all out of the reference range, it's pretty safe to say that there's an issue with your prostate and you need to go in for an ultrasound and perhaps a biopsy. Again, there's, this is just the first step in the assessment of cancer. And it could still be that you simply have prostate inflammation, which also contributes to these elevated uh, concentrations in the bloodstream. So again, further assessment is also required. Now, unfortunately, many of these uh, cancer markers are related to several different organs. So in my case, when I saw that my neuron specific annulase was elevated out of the reference range, I decided to get an ultrasound of my entire abdomen and an x-ray of my lungs because NSE is related to several different organs, including the lungs and the pancreas and the thyroid. So I had all of those examined and did another blood work to follow up to see if my NSE was still elevated and then everything came back negative. That's how I was diagnosed with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So, you know, uh, good news and bad news, unfortunately, during that examination. So it might be that a cancer marker is elevated one time and it's just a moment in time, but it would still be highly advised to check the specific organs that it's related to if only one marker is elevated. But if there's several markers elevated, it helps to determine and pinpoint which of the organs, um, you know, might have a problem going on. Now, because cancer, heart disease, kidney disease and diabetes are unfortunately relatively common nowadays in the modern world. It also means that there's a lot of studies and information that you can learn from. So if you see one of these markers off and you suspect that it's related to a specific organ, also because there's a specific uh, cancer in your family history, schedule an appointment with a specialist ASAP. That's what I did. When I saw my neuronal specific annulus out of range, I called two hospitals and scheduled an appointment with the first uh, specialist that was available. I did a battery of tests, including checking my neuronal specific annulase again. So that was, you know, two days after the previous test, only to find out that it was back in range. And all the related other cancer markers that they did as a follow-up to see, you know, if lung cancer was present and, and pancreatic cancer was present, they also came back negative. So that was good news. Of course, I was diagnosed with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which I'm resolving right now, um, but it's still good news. So if you see, you know, a couple markers or one marker off, don't wait. Don't let that sit there knowing that there's something wrong. Schedule an appointment with a specialist and go through the tests which are relevant for that specific marker or specific kind of cancer if several markers are off. And again, you have to take your family history into a consideration highly. Because if it occurs in your family once, unfortunately, it might occur again. So when I saw my neuronal specific annulase out of range, I immediately discontinued the growth hormone. I added in metformin to lower my serum IGF-1 concentrations. 
both have been associated with the progression of cancer. So I wanted to get those levels as low as possible, as fast as possible. I stopped eating because fasting has a positive outcome on certain cancers. I introduced a very high dose of vitamin C, which has been shown to have a positive outcome on certain cancers. And luckily, I was able to schedule an appointment with a specialist within two days. So I only had to do that protocol for two days. But why wait, right? You can make a lot of positive um, changes to your protocol as soon as you see something off. And then you simply wait for the specialist to confirm what's going on. Um, again, there's many different approaches to resolve cancer, and I'm certainly no specialist. So again, I would highly advise you to discuss that with the specialist for a proper approach going forward. And uh, whether that's uh, radiation or uh, femoron therapy or, you know, everything else, a chemo that is, um, you know, unfortunately required in certain cases, um, yeah, that might be a direction going forward. So if you see all your cancer markers in range, you basically have the green light for one year, considering uh, certain cancers are not present within your family. You have the green light for one year um, to go on growth hormone, growth hormone secretagogues, or uh, GW1516, or everything else that has been associated with the progression of cancer that we you know, generally use in bodybuilding. Now, again, cancer can grow very rapidly. So ideally, you check your cancer markers every year especially the ones that are present um, within your family history. Because just because your grandmother got, um, you know, stomach cancer like mine did, uh, doesn't mean you can't get it at an earlier age. And again, when you take growth hormone and GW1516, maybe uh, the, the cancer in your family that took five years to progress can now progress in one year or six months. Right? So you have to keep that into consideration. Just because you're cancer free today, proven with blood work, and perhaps ultrasounds and MRIs doesn't mean you're cancer free a year from now or three years from now, or maybe even six months from now. All right. So you're, you're still taking a risk, but for the hypochondriacs around us uh, or inside of us, it's still a good test to perform frequently. So you can tack off that box of health regarding cancer. Um, when you decide to da dabble in growth hormone, growth hormone, secreted GW1516, et cetera. I check my cancer markers every three years because I've checked them, you know, frequently enough that I feel that it's uh, no longer required to check them every year. I still do, you know, the, the cancer markers which are related to stomach cancer and colorectal cancer because my grandmother uh, developed that even though it was metastasized from the stomach cancer into the colorectal and a couple other parts of the body. Um, so I check those every year. Um, to make sure I stay on top of that. And, uh, you know, at the first hint of trouble, I would uh, discontinue everything that, uh, you know, could contribute uh, to progression of cancer and do everything in my power to get that resolved ASAP. Like I did last time, I put everything into place for two days and then it was confirmed with blood work and ultrasound that I had um, no cancer present. And I really hope that helps, guys. Again, um, you know, it's a little bit of a hypochondriac approach, but... That's a lot cheaper than uh, doing these tests, considering they come at the price of one or two kits of growth hormone. So you might have to um, stay off growth hormone one month, two months out of the year to check your cancer markers and break even on your expenses. Uh, but it's certainly going to set you back a lot less than um, rapidly progressing cancer that is uh, undiagnosed until it's too late. And I really hope that helps, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the ebooks on my website, vigorousteve.com slash shop. In the Growth Hormone and IGF-1 ebook, I mention all these cancer markers specifically just as an informative approach for the guys that are considering Growth Hormone or IGF-1. Again, check your cancer markers um, just so you feel safe. And you don't have this uh, lingering voice in the back of your head. What if, right? If you're looking for personalized advice, you can find the rates to my services in the services section. Contact me directly if you're interested. Follow me on Instagram at VigorSteve. Figures crew, you guys are awesome. You guys know what to do. And I'll see you in the next video.